At one point in Japan, Xevious was the hottest arcade game since Space Invaders. North America did not quite share the same level of affection for it, but Xevious still ranks in many best video games of all time lists, and it was ported to just about any and every console of the day. In the NES library, Xevious is more of an afterthought. It's kind of a curiosity. What's that X game all about? Its unremarkable presentation and shallow gameplay depth is primitive even compared to other NES vertical shooters, especially those that would release later. But Xevious really shined in arcades and was seen as something special in its day. The game's legacy is quite notable. Some sources claim that Xevious is one of the first video games to have a boss fight, and it has retrospectively garnered the title as the father of vertically scrolling shooters, making it a highly influential piece of gaming history. How does the NES version hold up? Well, let's see. Graphically, Xevious isn't going to blow you away. The ground below you is drawn with simple lines and shapes, and filled in with textureless solid colors. It reminds me of a baseball infield at times with the green grass and tan sand features. Your ship is a static, unchanging sprite that has no thruster animations when it speeds up and shows no sign of damage when hit. Even the enemies mostly amount to various metallic-looking shapes. There are the metal washer-looking enemies, tumbling squares, and various flying or grounded orbs that either shoot at you or do nothing. The goal of the game is obvious, shoot stuff and survive. Enemies fly down the screen towards you and you can either shoot them down or let them fly past you. No attacks come from the rear. You do have the option of bombing the ground, with your aim indicated by the constant reticle on screen by pressing B, or you can hammer away at A for your anti-aircraft missiles. That's it. No fancy power-ups to be found. Your loadout from the first second of play is the same the entire game. The game is divided into 16 stages, but you likely won't realize that as you're playing. There are no interludes or segments for tallying your score. You go from beginning to end all in one uninterrupted mission. The only way to really tell you're on a different stage is by where you respawn if you die. If you are at least 70% of the way through one of the segments, the game will respawn you ahead to the next segment. Otherwise, you'll start back at the beginning of the segment you died in. You'll also come in contact with some larger enemies on occasion, but they're mostly static and on the ground. As mentioned, some say these are the first boss enemies in gaming, yet because of the way the game flows through in one seamless go, they won't really feel like bosses. The scrolling does stop for a second while you fight them, but it doesn't seem you need to eliminate these larger enemies in order to proceed. While killing every enemy is unnecessary, points do result in extra lives. Your first 20,000 gives you a life, and your first 60,000 gives you another, and then every 60,000 after that adds more. You start with three lives, one hit kills you, and there are no continues. That said, the game isn't really all that difficult. It's a short playthrough, taking all of 15 minutes to complete if you make it through. While it is bare bones, and doesn't hold a candle to the more sophisticated shooters in the genre that would follow on the NES, I still enjoyed my time with it and I think its simplicity has a lot to do with that. It's sometimes refreshing to play a shooter that I can survive longer than 5 minutes in, and it's not as though all you see is all you get, there are apparently some secret one-ups scattered around the map if you bomb certain unsuspecting areas. A major detraction from the game, however, is the sound design. The music, if you want to call it that, and you know what? You better not call it that. If you think this is music, then I expect you have a playlist of car alarms you enjoy. Anyway, it is the most mind-numbing, repetitive, torturous racket to fly out of a TV speaker. Do you think you're ready for this? Are you ready for 10 seconds? 10 full seconds of this. Okay, hold your breath. Here we go. See? It's awful. The sound effects of the missiles and bombs aren't much more pleasant. I'd rather have someone fire a gun near my ear than listen to this game be played for more than 10 seconds. Heck, fire the gun into my ear. Again, Xevious isn't much, and that's 100% of its charm these days. It's certainly not topping a lot of lists, but as long as you turn the volume down, no, off, then you can have a little fun trying to beat this port of an odd relic. If you're thirsty for more Xevious, there were sequels, some of which stayed in Japan and others that never got ported off arcades. The most recent incarnation was Xevious Resurrection, which was available digitally for the PS3 back in 2009. It was the same concept, but with upgraded graphics, a simultaneous two-player mode, and an overhaul of that background noise originally composed by war criminals. That's going to do it for Xevious on the NES, Now, as always, don't put guns in your face. 
Thanks for watching.